So often in JavaScript, we find ourselves working with a data object like this one, which has uh, data stored in properties, uh, each made up of a key and a value. Now, JavaScript objects are great for storing data, but they are quite difficult to work with. And the reason is that we cannot iterate through them. So to show you, first of all, I'm just going to show you an attempt to iterate through uh, this object. So I'm just going to try and log uh, each of the properties to the console. So we're just going to loop through for as many properties as there are, and there are five properties. So if we check the console log now, so you might be surprised to see that it's actually empty. And the reason is that we can't even get the length of the data object, we cannot iterate through it. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to hard code five here, which isn't a good solution, but I just want to show you what happens if the loop runs. And you'll see here that we get five times undefined in the console log. So what we really want to do in this situation is turn this JavaScript object into uh, an object type that we can actually work with more easily that we can iterate through. And so usually what we want to do is turn an object like this into an array. And what I'm going to show you is some easy ways that you can do that using JavaScript's inbuilt object constructor. So first of all, I'm going to comment out the loop and then we'll call this constructor. So we call it first of all by referencing it. And then we need to decide what we want from the object. So do we want entire properties or do we want just values or do we want just keys? So if we just want just values, uh, we write object.values and then we pass in the object. And that is it. It's going to return an array to us that we can iterate through with the values of the object. Okay. Now, say you want the keys only, so it's going to be exactly the same, apart from instead of calling uh, the values method on object, we call the keys method, and that's going to return an array as well, just with the keys. Now, a small tip here, if you do want to get the length of uh, an object, uh, you can call object.keys, and then pass in the object and then tack on length at the end. And that's going to return the length of the object. So the final method I want to show you is object.entries. And what this is going to do is it's going to return keys and values. And but it's not going to return it in the same format. So I need to get rid of this length here. It's not going to return it in the same format. In fact, what it returns is an array of arrays. So it's an array of length five, and then in each of the arrays which are nested, they are of length two, and they contain each key and each value. So that is to say each property. Now, in case you don't like this nested format, what we can do is actually apply a, a method to this called flat, and that's going to flatten the array. So to flatten the array, we just call flat and then log it to the console again. And now you'll see that we've got rid of the nesting. Now we have a, a non-nested array. So it's capturing each property again, but this time without the nesting. Now you might be wondering, how does this work with an object that has nesting in the first place? So in this next script, I have a data object that's a bit more representative of what you would likely get back from an API. It has some nesting in it. And this time we've got two users, uh, two properties for those. And the value of each property is itself an object with the information about the user contained in it. Now, what I want to do in this example is get the name and last name of each user and store them in an array that has uh, nesting and one that has no nesting. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is on this nested object, let's try calling object.entries and see what happens. So in this case, we get uh, an object, sorry, we get an array back length two, and each of those arrays, each of those two arrays also contains an array of length two. So we have a fair bit of nesting 
within the array. Now, this is not ideal because we only really want the um, name and the last name. So what we can do is apply value, call values instead. And now we get back an array that contains two objects. Okay, so the first object relates to user one and the second one relates to user two. And we can access the name and the last name uh, fairly easily. So first of all, I'm going to comment this out. And then I'm going to show you this loop. So I'm going to show you how we can iterate uh, through this nested object to get the information we want indirectly by turning it into an array. So first of all, the loop runs as many times as there are keys. So I'll use that little trick I showed you earlier, object.keys.length. So we've got the length of the object now. Now, for each bit of information we want to get, name and last name, I'm pushing that uh, to this array up here, which I've initialized, but is currently an empty array. So what I'm pushing in is object.values uh, in position i.name. So in the first run, zero, and the second one is getting the last name. And then what I'm doing, so pushing those to the array, and then we'll get a flat array. So you should see this now. Okay, so we've got Captain Anonymous, the Hulk. Now, what if you want to keep some level of nesting here? Now, what if you want to keep some level of nesting here? What I'm going to do this time, instead of pushing each one into the uh, array that I've created up here, I'm going to create a new array within the loop itself. So I'm going to call this uh, elements to push. And that's just going to be an empty array to begin with. And then I'm going to push each of these into this new elements to push. Okay, and then I'm going to push at the end of each loop, whatever's in elements to push, and I'm going to push that to the array. And then I'm going to push to the array. Now at the end of the loop, I'm going to push to the array whatever is in elements to push. So now we should have an array with the objects nested. So now it's a nested array. So we've got the main array contains two arrays, and then each of those arrays contains two elements.